Legend has it that the Planche des Belles Filles, literal translation, the plank of the pretty girls, takes its name from the alluring women folk of nearby Planche les Mines, who escaped the drunken advances of Swedish invaders by diving into a mountain tarn during the Thirty Years' War of the 17th century. Not quite 400 years later, the climb got its world premiere. Bradley Wiggins pulled on the yellow jersey for the first time, and Chris Froome took his maiden stage win. But it wasn't necessarily pretty. Four days before the race actually started, we went training and getting used to the style Chris Froome rides in, even in the group. And I was like, oh, this is an interesting one. It's like, I always said, it's like, gravity does not exist for him. Look at Chris Froome riding away for Sky. Unsightly it may have been, like a grasshopper pushing a shopping trolley, said someone, and there were even less flattering epithets. But unbeknown to anyone at the time, Froome had also helped to ring in a new era for the tour, one defined by his four victories, crushing sky dominance, an explosion in British interest, and, in time, damaging revelations and suspicion, of which more later in this tour. In the short term, Froome drew confidence. That was one thing that I could really take away from the 2012 Tour de France was um, being there uh, up on that first mountaintop finish on Planche de Belfi and it's it's a little bit uh, a little bit of a sort of a special feeling going back there this year. I think at the time it felt very new. It was uh, the first time a, a British team had, had performed in that way at the Tour de France. We could see what an effect it was having building that cycling culture. And within days, the 2012 tour would have a succulent subplot. Bradley Wiggins has been left behind. Does Froome know what he's doing with that acceleration because he's got Bradley Wiggins on the defensive now? Froome versus Wiggins, Domestique versus team leader. And even more titillating, their respective partners versus each other on social media in what the suddenly tour-smitten tabloids would dub the War of the Wags. Much ado about nothing, all's well that ends well, of course. Three-week Grand Tour, you have to imagine, is uh, the hardest thing you can do. Oh, they've gone and down. Big, again, a top Cavendish has gone down. Cavendish is in the middle of that one at the moment. There's everything. There's from uh, arguing, crying, joy. The best part is when you go over the last big mountain and you come closer to Paris or you're nearly there, when the tension goes off everyone and it's just joy and uh, big party and everybody's in a good mood. But, as well as the first British Tour winner, we were left with questions. Could an emancipated Froome have won the race? And what of his true feelings about Wiggins, both then and now? I, I would say it's, it's natural to have those kind of uh, tensions when, when, when you're in those, those kind of positions. But I think we, we dealt with it uh, pretty well at the time. And uh, we managed to get to Paris uh, in first and second place. How would you characterise your relationship with Brad now? Yeah, we've talked about things and it's, it's water under the bridge.